The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Welcome, my friends, to this service of Holy Eucharist with spiritual communion. On this, the 15th Sunday after the Feast of Pentecost, we are gathered by the Spirit in our fellowship, even this way, so we may hear the Scriptures and participate even spiritually from the sacrament of the altar. Let us pray. Almighty God, to, to you all hearts, hearts are open, open, all desires desire known, and, and from, from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, Lord have, have mercy upon us, and write both these your laws in our hearts, we beseech you.
Let us pray. Clear up, O Lord, the, the wills of your, your faithful people, people that richly bearing the fruit of good works, we may be by you richly rewarded. rewarded. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the letter of James, chapter 2. My brothers and sisters, do you, with your acts of favoritism, really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, Have a seat here, please while to the other who is poor, you say, Stand there, or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom, that he has promised to those who love him. But you've dishonoured the poor. Is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked over you? You do well if you really fulfil the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law of trans as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. For the one who said, You shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but if you murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment will be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food and one of you says to him, go in peace, keep warm and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what's the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together the words from Psalm 146. Praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord, O my soul. soul. I, I will praise, praise the Lord as long as, long as I, I live. live. I will, I will sing, sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals, in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth the sea and all, and all that, that is in them, who, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. 
The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widows. But the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to, you, to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. From there he set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Seraphinian origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon was gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephtaphta, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Let us pray. May only the truth be spoken. May only the truth be heard. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My friends, for the past few weeks, we have read about the travels of Jesus and the disciples around the Sea of Galilee, often crossing through lands said to be either Jewish or of the Gentiles, which is the same as from everybody else. And as you may have heard before, these constant boundary crossings, geographical and otherwise, has its own meaning throughout the text of the Gospel. Back then, it was a much wider practice for people from different ethnic and religious backgrounds to keep to themselves each living in their own territory with clear boundaries in between. For Jews and Gentiles alike, this keeping to themselves was often a matter of distrust of each other's traditions. Those two groups had complicated common histories with frequent armed conflict and tense territorial contests, even featured in the Old Testament. This difficult coexistence even translated into distrust in the way members from either group approached each other and their respective religious traditions. And I'm sure this doesn't sound familiar to us at all. So we know that pious Israelites chose not to mingle with Gentiles ostensibly for religious reasons. And I can only presume that this dislike was only reciprocal. Now, 2,000 years later, you and I, we have and observe our own social boundaries or conventions we hold on to in our behavior 
as part of our human community. Some boundaries are good and healthy, like the ones we observe for, in order to prevent the spread of a coronavirus. They are not always fun, but they can be life-saving. This is the sort of boundaries we will definitely seek to observe, for example, as we gather for in-person worship for the first time after many months, next Sunday, September the 12th, God willing, with COVID restrictions in place. But there are other boundaries that seem rather unhelpful, even if often wrapped in the language of the inevitable. I mean the boundaries which, by our own enthusiasm or that of our ancestors, keeps us from knowing, let alone loving people who don't look or behave or pray like us, whatever us means in Canada 2021. And such is just the sort of boundaries Jesus challenges when lifting others, regardless, or should I say, precisely on account of their being the other, the stranger, the child, the woman, the poor, and the sick, both then and often enough, also today, seeing as, some, as somehow less than complete human beings. Such people are met by Jesus there where they are, despite human boundaries and borders and distinctions, which are often enough more meant to alleviate our own insecurities than to effectively love others or coping with the world around us, for that matter. And in order to meet people there where they are, this practice of crossing human boundaries is only necessary. So even as Jesus moved around in his travels, he chose forth what he is truly about, the kingdom of God, which is for all, and especially so, for those considered in any way undeserving, both then and now, both in the scriptures and in our daily lives. The gospel lesson for today begins with the phrase, from there. If we look back in this text, we see from chapter 6, verse 53, that it means from the land of Gennesaret. That's where Jesus had been for days on end, feeding the multitudes, healing the sick, and teaching about the kingdom of God. Today, we are told he has gone into Tyre, a well-known land of the Gentiles. Now, it may well be that Jesus crossed over into territory of the Gentiles for the simple purpose of getting away from it all, if only for a little while. Time for rest and peace, or the same things Jesus could not really find among his own people, given the hot seal of the Pharisees he was debating in last week's gospel lesson, or the pressing needs of the crowds, asking for food and healing. Now, I really appreciate this Bible study, weekly Bible study we have with the parish men's group. We all learn, and often enough, we are all pushed to learn even more after we meet as a group. And in a recent such Bible study on Zoom, as we've been doing for some time now, someone pointed out that the things Jesus was saying during these travels around the Sea of Galilee seem like geared towards making people uncomfortable. The crowds, the disciples, and the twelve, they were all shocked at times. And as the gospel tells us, things were said even to the bewilderment of Jesus himself. Enter a woman of Syrophoenician origin, a mother with a sick child at home. From my own experience of having been given birth and raised by a very young mother, I learned that when the well-being of the children is at stake, mothers don't take no nonsense from no one. And it will seem that not even from Jesus Christ himself, this will sound like a really bad joke if only today's gospel lesson did not back it up entirely. 
consider that this Syrophoenician mother had crossed some boundaries already, boundaries of culture, religion, and power, by addressing Jesus, a Jewish man, by herself with a request. This is not the way things usually went, and I guess that's why the short of surprise response from Jesus. On the other hand, our Lord is talking here to a mother who seeks the healing of her daughter from what it seems afflicted by epilepsy. And Jesus' first response seems to address nothing in her plight, but all his own concerns instead. Jesus' words could be perceived as careless, heartless even. Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. It's like a half polite way, if at all, for telling her off, since this is not the kind of thing I came all the way here to do. Also, the dog bit is kind of a low blow. Again, Jesus' response was only ordinary for that time, place, and matter at hand. That's the way things were. And this is perhaps what might be most surprising of all, if not plain disappointing. This was the social currency of the time. And I think you and I are familiar with this sort of historical horror about what used to be acceptable, even fashionable, and which has, has now fallen in disuse and even more or less widespread condemnation. <coughs> Residential schools. <coughs> The extraordinary thing here was for this Gentile mother to talk back to Jesus, to the Jewish male teacher and healer, on account of a pain greater than her fear. Sir, or master, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs, she said. Because you and I are 2,000 years away from the times of Jesus, it is often more difficult to ascertain deeper aspects to a story, like someone's state of mind, the weight of a phrase, or the significance of a conversation having taken place at all. This gospel text is just one such story. What we can tell, and with some certainty, is that it was the relentless faith of this mother her angst and persistence in searching for a cure for her daughter's illness, what truly turned this story upside down, even to the eyes of Jesus himself. First, here Jesus also changes. From concerning himself with what he was there to do, our Lord moves on to making the faith and struggle of this woman his own, and with words about what he truly came, not just to tire, but what he came to the world to do, the world, period. For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. Words of blessing and relief and change and healing of her daughter's illness into health. In what happens next, the terms have changed quite a bit even in part thanks to the preceding events, I will say. Jesus is on the road, again now headed to another Gentile enclave, the Decapolis. He knows that there is no rest for him anywhere anymore because the word is out and the sick so many. And this is when the crossing of borders and boundaries becomes, in the text of this gospel, an intentional element. Jesus has now, by all accounts, gone intentionally into Gentile territory, where he had just found even greater faith than he will have seen among Israel, like himself. In the Capitalist, Jesus is presented with a man afflicted in his speech, a deaf-mute man whom he healed by having his ears opened and his tongue released. Like with the Syrophoenician woman before, those who brought the deaf mute man to Jesus didn't do so because our Lord fulfilled oh so well all the purity demands of the law of Israel, 
but because of his power to heal and restore. Jesus chose before the Gentiles, the other for any Jewish person of the time, the same signs of the kingdom of God he did before among the children of Israel, a seed of what the church meeting around the Gospel of Mark will become, gathering believers, both Gentile and Jewish, in the same fellowship. Now, in our own lives of faith, we go out of ourselves precisely so we may meet and serve Jesus in others. This is also why we have changed so much in our fellowship and ministries and even our common worship for the past way too many months already. So as many of us may meet, may be served, may be loved in the name of Jesus while caring for each other's well-being, which includes our physical health. This same concern accounts for some of us maybe choosing not to attend common worship, not yet, for the sake of our own health and that of your relatives. That same concern accounts for the ways in which we shall be gathering, starting next Sunday, for our common worship in this same space, God be praised but wearing protective masks at all times, keeping our physical distancing, being patient and loving with one another as we walk on together on uncharted territory, but with a common purpose. We go on together this or any other way, pursuing our faith, building each other up in love and serving the world acting on our faith so our belief may become a living sign of him who calls us all. Today's reading from the Gospel at the Epistle of James makes this almost painfully clear. Our faith, our thoughts and ideas are all very important and they deserve our time of study, reflection and prayer. But that is as much as our works our ministries in action in the world for the service of others, Christian or otherwise. So we may gather and worship and serve, and with our Lord, learn of the boundless reaches of his own mercy. Even if we may need to be called back to our senses every so often by Jesus, who now talks back to our own assumptions and biases about the other, especially those who seek him and his blessing. Thanks be to God. Let us confess the faith with the church believes with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ his, his only Son, Son our Lord, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Son, let us pray to God, who governs all heaven and earth. Inspire your church always to press forward to the goal to which she is called. Make all her members faithful servants of your will. We offer our prayers to you, to all who worship in the Diocese of Niagara. We remember Bishop Susan Bell and all clergy as we take steps into reopening our places of worship. In our Anglican Lutheran cycle of prayer, we pray for the theological colleges and training programs within the ecclesiastical province of Rupert's Land, Arthur Turner Training School, the Center for Christian Studies, the College of Emmanuel and St. Chad, Henry Budd College for Ministry, St. John's College, Dr. William Winter College for Ministry, James Satie College for Ministry. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church, we pray for the right to water and a renewed commitment to the stewardship of creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Look with mercy on a world when the greed of gain deprives many of their rights. Guide those in authority to govern by the true values of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. We remember all whose lives have been affected by hurricanes, monsoons, flooding, and other natural disasters. May those people know of your guiding hand to lead them through the wilderness they now find themselves in. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. In our dealings with others, teach us not to trust our own desires, but to follow where Christ has led. Make us honest in our work, seeking the good of others. We pray for all young people who are returning to school this week. Keep them safe and enfolded in your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We continue to pray for all frontline workers, emergency workers, and others who are fighting to reduce the impact that COVID is having on our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. Bring healing to those who are sick in body or mind or spirit. Lift up those whose spirits are weary. We remember especially those today who have asked for our prayers. Jane Ross, Jane Gatke, Jeff Smith, Bernice Peterson, Melanie and family, Cheryl Clark, Mary Sherwood, Keith Braithwaite, Allie, Lynn Aitkins, Joseph Moore, Pat and Les Matthews, Jody Cocker, Corinne Newell, Marion Conlon, Vic Burden, Jean Griffin, Jim Glass, Linda Sutton, Gerald Taylor, Shirley, Habib, Stephen Semich, Brenda Brain, Alec Dickerson, Edith Walsh, George Hitchmau, Elsie Mae Scott, Ron Knapp, Ross, and others we hold in our hearts. We pray also for friends, family, and residents in long-term care. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. In the glow of our Paschal candle, we pray for those who have died, remembering especially those who are written forever in our hearts. Grant that they shall indeed see the face of Christ and live with him forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
Let Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine forever in our hearts and draw us to that light where you live in radiant glory. Amen. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you in thought, thought word, and deed, deed by, by what we have done and, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also with, with you. you. My brothers and sisters, I do have some announcements I wanted to make. Um, first of all, uh, please do join us for our coffee hour, our Zoom coffee hour, which is at 11 o'clock. Uh, now that's going to change in subsequent Sundays because our service time is now going to be 10 o'clock from, from uh, September the 12th on. And so we won't have time to have a Zoom coffee hour at 11 o'clock. So we're going to move it to a Zoom half hour <laughs> uh, for coffee uh, at 11.30. That'll be um, next Sunday. Um, so please do look for that. But this Sunday, please jo join us at 11. Uh, we are going to rerun the video, uh, instructional video, about um, how we're going to be... Uh, welcoming you on September the 12th. So I hope that you will watch it and uh, take notes from it. Thank you. It has been a very long time since we've been able to worship in person, 18 long months. But now we are overjoyed to be able to welcome you back to in-person worship starting September the 12th. Uh, there will be three services offered uh, each week. Uh, two on Sunday morning, the 8.15 and the 10, and one on Wednesday morning, the 10 o'clock service. Uh, in each case, we will have a maximum capacity of 50 people in the church, including our volunteers. So we will need you to register in advance uh, for those services. Uh, also, uh, because we can't really gather together uh, safely, we're not going to be able to offer a coffee hour or any kind of a gathering like that. But we're delighted uh, to be able to welcome you back to in-person worship. We have been working for a long time to safely welcome you back for in-person worship. It has been the work of many volunteers with the leadership of your parish executive. We developed a reopening plan which was reworked several times as more scientific data and governmental and diocesan guidelines were given. The church will have been deep cleaned using volunteers and a professional cleaning company. In addition, between services we will be using an electronic fogger machine which very quickly disinfects all surfaces. We will need to strongly enforce physical distancing, masking, and will be increasing ventilation in the church by opening the windows. You will notice some significant changes to our worship to keep you safe. In order to maintain physical distancing, we will only be able to welcome a maximum of 50 people at any service, including our volunteers. So we need you to reserve your place in advance by calling the parish office at 905-634-1826 between Monday to Wednesday of the previous week. You will need to indicate which service you would like to attend, either the 8.15 or 10 a.m. services on Sunday or the 10 a.m. service the following Wednesday. 
Once the 50-person threshold has been met, we will begin a waiting list for subsequent services. If you later find you cannot make a service for which you have reserved a place, please immediately call the office again so that we can offer that place to someone on the waiting list. I can't stress strongly enough that we would like for all parishioners 12 years old and older to be doubly vaccinated at least two weeks preceding your coming back to in-person worship. This is not only to keep yourself safe, but also everyone else in the church building, many of whom are vulnerable because of age or other reasons. Note that we will continue to offer online worship for those who cannot or choose not to attend our in-person services. When you approach the church, please maintain physical distancing by observing the markings on the sidewalk and in the narthex. We ask you to wear a mask while waiting in line and throughout the entire service. Masks will need to cover mouth and nose and fit closely to the face. The plastic shield type that only covers the mouth and nose but does not touch the face is not sufficient. There will be a check-in quiz at the door to make sure that you are healthy to attend and your name and contact information will be registered so that we can contact you later if anyone in the same service later tests positive for COVID-19. We will ask you to sanitize your hands and to take a copy of the paper bulletin. We highly suggest you sign up for pre-authorized giving if you wish to give regularly to the church, but if you still want to give by bringing an envelope, there will be an offering plate close to the entrance of the nave, the main part of the church, for you to leave your envelope before you take your seat. You will be escorted to your seat and, asked, and we ask you to ma- remain there for the entire service. Communion, just the bread, will be delivered to your seat to minimize movement. Please wait until the presider moves further along the pew and then you can lift your mask just enough to eat the bread and replace the mask again. If you need to go to the washroom during the service, we ask you to go maintaining a two meter distance from others. The verger will need to sanitize all contact services on the way to and in the washroom each time it is used. During the service, there will be no singing by the congregation, but you may hum along quietly behind your mask. If health and diocesan guidelines continue to allow it, There may be a soloist or two singers in the choir pews who will sing wearing masks. When the service is over, a verger will signal when it is your turn to leave. Once again, make sure you take the printed worship material with you or deposit it in the blue bin at the door of the church. Please do not stay around the narthex or immediately outside the door of the church to prevent gathering there. Although a lot of work by many individuals has gone into this process, we are always aware that many heads are better than a few. So if you have comments which might be constructive in helping us improve once you've experienced our worship in person, please contact me at rector at stlukesburlington.ca. After you or someone you know has attended one of our worship services and later tests positive for COVID, please contact the office immediately. One last thing uh, before I let you go. Uh, It's been 18 months since we've seen each other and we will all be wearing masks. So we would like you to wear your name tag when you come back. Uh, If you still have the St. Luke's one that we made for you, great. If you don't, make up one for yourself uh, so it will recognize uh, who we're speaking to when we see each other. I hope that this video has been instructive to you And on behalf of the Executive Parish Council and all at St. Luke's, we're overjoyed to welcome you back to in-person worship. Also, please note that there is the Dialson service, which is available on their YouTube channel from uh, 10 10 a.m. We are having another Middle Eastern meal to help support our refugee family. Each meal costs $35, and that includes a $10 Uh, $10 tax receipt uh, for a charitable donation. Uh, You do have to do look at our online bulletin. You have to choose which dish you want and which dessert you want and you can pay either by e-transfer or by check and you have to write refugee meal on the memo line or in the comment section and uh, you have to phone uh, 
Janice Scaffold to let her know what your choice is. You will be given, uh, th that has to be in um, by September the 10th, the booking, and the actual meal is September the 17th, and you will be given a pickup time uh, to pick up your meal. So uh, please note that our uh, Halt and Fresh food box is uh, on again, and you uh, there's two box sizes, uh, $10 or $20, um, two delivery dates each month and a reminder to pick up your orders of fresh produce on September the 8th or September the 21st between 3.30 p.m. and 5 p.m. So you make your order in advance. Also, please note, uh, given the uh, disaster in Haiti uh, following the earthquake, PWRDF, a Primate uh, Relief Fund, has uh, already made... Uh, uh, a donation towards the ACT Alliance to help respond, but you can still give to PWRDF. They're still collecting money to help in that situation. Uh, our advocacy, our next advocacy breakfast is September the 25th at 11 a.m. and it's a daughter of the parish, Erica Scaffel, uh, who's going to be speaking to us on Zoom um, from uh, El Ogar in Honduras, where she's been working for the past five years. So please do join us for that um, and do book ahead for that as well. Let us pray. Holy God, accept our offering of labor and love. May we bring you true and spiritual worship and be one with you. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with all the company of heaven, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of power and, power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread, gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your holy church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church. Amen. 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 And now let us pray in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be your name. name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. 
Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Dear friends, I invite you in this moment, wherever you may be, to receive Christ in communion with the saints and the gathering of God's people, unseen and yet present with us now. Let us pray. We receive you, Lord Jesus Christ. We, we welcome, welcome your, your presence, presence in us, us and, and together, together proclaim our love for you. With our hearts, minds, our souls, and our strength, with the saints, we worship you. With the angels, we adore you. With, with your, your whole church, church we, we proclaim your reign. Come to us and, and make, make us, us one in you. In you. Amen. Amen. pray. Father, your, your word, word and sacrament, sacrament give us food and life. life. May, May we who have shared in holy things bear fruit to your honor and glory. In, in the name of Jesus Christ, Christ the Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
The peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.